We don't win anymore. We don't win a trade. Great country, great people. And you're going to be very happy. Believe me. The incredible men and women. We're going to start winning again. Believe me. I'm not ranting and raving. I'm not ranting and raving. I'm not ranting and raving. I'm, if, Go ahead. He is interesting to me linguistically because he speaks like everybody else. And we're not used to hearing that from a president. And these are great people. These are some great people. We're used to hearing somebody speak who sounds much more educated, uh, much smarter, much more refined than your everyday American. But when we hear Donald Trump speaks, he sounds like he could be a family member or a friend. And he's unique in that sense. Don't forget, that's the way I won. Remember, I used to give you a news conference every time I made a speech, which was like every day. Okay? No, that's how I won. I won with news conference and probably speeches. Many people comment on the simplicity of his vocabulary or the lower register of his language, as well as the simpler grammar of his sentences or syntax. We will have so much winning if I get elected that you may get bored with winning. Believe me. I agree. You'll never get bored with winning. We never get bored. Something else that many people have commented on is this the fact that he tends to jump from topic to topic rather abruptly in his uh, speeches. Uh, this is my first stop, officially. We're not talking about the balls, and we're not talking about even the speeches. Although, they did treat me nicely on that speech yesterday. I always call them the dishonest media, but they treated me nicely. <laughs> but I, I want to say that there is nobody that feels stronger about the intelligence community and the CIA than Donald Trump. Some people talk about that as him sounding incoherent, but again, this is something that we all do in everyday speech. It's just unusual to hear it from a president speaking in a public formal context. One of the things that I've noticed he does a lot is he uses the expression Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. If you look at um, where Donald Trump uses believe me, he'll use it to preface an important point that he wants to make. And believe me, I and we inherited one big mess. That I can tell you. And he also uses it at the end of an important point that he makes in a speech. And I'm also here to tell you about our plans for the future. And they're big and they're bold, and it's what our country is all about, believe me. So it functions as a verbal bracket surrounding points that he really wants listeners to pay attention to. And so this can be a very useful device in reining your audience in when you have a very long speech to focus on the important points you want them to take away. I will be the greatest jobs producer that God ever created, and I mean that. Hyperbole is definitely part of the Trump brand um, of president. He uses words that are both hyperbolic in the positive sense, especially now as president, like great and spectacular. I think we have one of the great cabinets ever put together. I think we're going to do some absolutely spectacular things for the American people. Even his hand gestures, for example, are hyperbolic. So if you look at nonverbal communication when he's speaking, he uses a lot of two-handed gestures. So you'll see like this, you'll see this. Um, you'll often see something like that or like that. I think what Donald Trump teaches us about linguistics is that you can use language to create a brand. You can use language to construct an identity that is distinct, that is recognizable, and that, it, that works toward creating an authentic persona um, that people will pay attention to.